Hey guys, JD here again. I wanted to give a tutorial today on creating really strange glitch textures with a method I haven't seen discussed or utilized before. This is going to be using mostly free plugins or plugins that come stock with an Ableton Live. This particular sample I'm about to play for you is going to be using Portal as well as I think something else that isn't for yeah, Portal and Pro R2, which are not free plugins, um, so it's not really quite exactly the same, but Pro R2 can be really easily replaced with Ableton Stock Reverb, and you can achieve a relatively similar effect. So I'm going to play the sample for you now. So yeah, some interesting textures uh, going on in there. Some cool kind of staccato noises. I'm going to go ahead now and open up a project and teach you how to do it. All right, so I've opened up a new session. The only things that I have on this right now is some uh, a limiter on the master just to make it pop, some more, and then I also have um, my default MIDI like profile. And so what we're going to do is you can take really any sample that you like. I have one that I'll link in the description that I'm using. I'll just go ahead and drop that in there, and I'll just play this out halfway through so you can hear what it's like. Yeah, so like a relatively bright pad, but you can really do this with anything if you want. Especially, I mean, I recommend using things that are good for granulation because this is kind of similar to granulation. You can uh, play with it however you like. This isn't simpler, by the way. We're going to slice by region, and we're going to slice this down into, uh, depending on the size of your sample, about like 40 regions. So we want these to be relatively short. And now I'll go ahead and set this to gate instead of trigger. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take Buffer Shuffler. We're going ahead and we're going to go take this stutter preset and we're going to increase it to about 16 steps. And also what we're going to do just to automate the process is go ahead in here and we're going to draw, let's put this in like C sharp major and just play some lights of the sample. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drawn out like a little melody, kind of a melody. Let's see how that sounds before we chop it up. Okay. Let's actually bring this down an octave, and I'm going to do that by hitting shift and then down arrow. This one as well. Why not this one just for fun? Already kind of an interesting sound that we have going on there. We're going to give it a lot more character by using Buffer Shuffler. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to auto and then dice. And that is going to randomize these steps here, which are going to change the amount of stutter. Let's just add a touch of pitch variation, make it bounce around a little bit. And you hear how this sounds. I'm going to take off that pitch variation. So that sounds okay, but it's a bit too prominent. So let's uh, drag that dry wet to like 30%. And that's kind of interesting already. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of reverb. Let's actually take a stock, like a reverb preset. Let's see how small hall sounds. Bring that dry wet down again. Bring that size up. And as you can see, it's going through these samples here. Let's see if we can just like take this, make them even thinner. And that's cool, but it is a little bit repetitive, and it's not all that interesting. So let's go into MIDI, and we're going to mess around with the velocity of it. So we'll go into velocity, and we'll go on to add some random, right? Uh, and then we'll have a little bit of drive to that random. And you can hear the stutter of this kind of creates a little bit of like a, a noticeably glitchy quality, yes, but sort of the timbre of like an MP3 has been compressed horribly and just sounds awful, <laughs> which can be the kind of effect that you might want to produce. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take on grain delay, right? And what I want to do is I want to make bring down dry wet a little bit. You want to give it just a touch of feedback and maybe a little bit of spray, but I'm not going to mess around too much with like pitch. So let's hear how that sounds. Let's actually put that before the reverb. Maybe randomize the pitch a bit. 
make this a bit, a bit small. Add some cores to this. And I'm so sorry, but I've just realized I've gone off and I've forgotten something. So what we're actually going to do before this buff of Shuffler, at the very beginning of our effects chain, is we're going to take a vocoder and let's slide that over here so it takes priority. We want this to be, we don't want it to sound all that much like a vocoder in the traditional sense. We want this to sound very clean, add a bit of like glassy character, or like I've heard it described as being kind of sharp. So we're, we're going to enhance that, and we're going to add, set this to 40 bands, uh, lower the depth, and maybe bring up the release a little bit, and then bring down the dry wet. Not, not, sorry, not noise. Okay, so it sounds a little bit more glassy, like I described. And then we're going to do something kind of experimental. We're going to take this auto filter here. And we're going to set this to OSR, add a little bit of drive, add a little bit of phase. Uh, we're not going to touch the LFO. Bring the envelope up to taste. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Dylan Baston's Strange Mod, which I'm also going to link down below because it is free and it is fantastic, just like all of Baston's plugins. We're going to set that here. And now what Strange Mod is doing is these are chaotic attractor algorithms. And what they do in the most basic sense is they create these lovely little swirling shapes. They create LFOs that look like that. And these are quasi-random um, if you add in some variance. I like using this particular LFO because I, I don't love the sound of pure randomness. On a psychoacoustic level, uh, you might understand that as humans, our brains are always picking out any kind of rhythm. So it may be hard for us to consciously recognize that there are rhythms going on within this modulator, but I believe that on a subconscious level, we're still kind of picking up on them. And that what we're going to do, bring in an LFO, bring this, where is that? Bring that right here, right at the strange mod. And we are going to do a little bit of randomness, but here's what I like to do random. I might have mentioned this in my previous tutorial. Set this to a rate of like two bars or as quickly as you like, depending on like what you're doing. And that's going to change the amount of variance in this particular algorithm. Um, I like using Lorenz for some things, but I find that Chen is a pretty fantastic chaotic attractor. Look at that. Or, mm, I don't know. Let's bring up the scale a bit. Yeah, that's going to modulate it a bit more heavily now. It's creating these little swirls you'll see in this LFO here. Kind of duck and come back in. Um, Let's actually see, no, that's good. Bring the speed up a bit, no, not too much. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this to a low pass band pass, like morphing filter. And you see that is going to change the character dramatically. So what we're going to do is we're gonna open up the mapping of the strange mod. You don't have to map the same parameters that I do, or I mean, from the same positions that I do, but we'll map the, I'll map the X position, the morph here. And you see that's going to do crazy things to the filter. And then we're going to map the Y to the frequency. And that creates kind of a, like a bouncy filter. Quite interesting. Actually, I think Lawrence is going to be fine for this. Bring them the speed because that is a bit too hectic. And now what we're going to do, we're going to see how that sounds first. Not quite so much frequency. But that creates some like... Almost sounds like... Very bright synthesizer, the pew, pew, some laser noises. I think it sounds really cool. And you can mess around with different chaotic attractors, like Halverson is also cool. I think I'll stick to this one, actually. Bring up the release just a tiny bit. Okay. Oh, what happened there? Oh, no. It's just gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, for reasons that are going to remain unknown to science, um, the auto filter in the strange mod did not want to cooperate at all for a second. But I've gone ahead and reloaded the strange mod with similar parameters, and it seems to be doing fine now. And again, I am tamping down how much it affects the resonance a bit, because you don't want to go too crazy and create noises that are too bright and too sharp. But yeah, you can see that these are modulating these parameters here, and that creates a pretty cool sound. Let's bring the release up a bit. I did bring up the dry wet on the buffer stutter. And that's nice. That is nice. So we're going to go ahead now. And we're going to bring in a digital clip center. 
saturator. That is going to give it a bit more pop. Let me bring up the volume a bit on this. And that is starting to sound kind of cool. And then you can play around with this from here. Like, I might go ahead and add in, like, Portal or something. Um, if you don't have Portal, that's fine. I'm just going to showcase what this might sound like for a second if you do. This really is a fantastic plugin. Let's try something like Fracture, and it will bring down the, the dry wet. No, not that. Grain Runner? That creates kind of a cool effect. Might sound nice before the reverb. Before the saturated. Okay. And then you can even bring in like a second grain delay if you want, like, if you just want to glitch it out even more. Or a second buffer setting. Let's bring down the dry wet. Maybe set this to like three. Maybe bring down the saturator. Make it not quite so harsh. Now we have a nice texture. I think that sounds quite cool. We can also do cool stuff with Redux. Or Redo. I have no idea. I think Redux is fine. We have a little bit of jitter. Not quite so well. Probably put that below the grain delay. And then what you can do is you can, I'll close these out. You can go to like, strange mod here. We'll, we'll take this LFO and we're gonna modulate the bit rate. And that creates some almost like formant or formant-esque noises, which sounds quite cool, like a little bit like vocals. Um, and then what we can do to take it even further, turn on DC shift and then use strange mod to affect redux to shift the shape a little bit make it a bit more random i i think what we'll do because this can create clipping if you're uh, changing the rate too quickly we'll smooth out this lfo to prevent that this can make things move along a bit more nicely you can bring down the speed but turn up the scale there's lots, lots of different ways to add character to the sound. And we might even smooth that out again by using EQ8. See, it's getting it's a bit too much going on there, so we'll just duck that a little bit. Or that might be something you like. And then again, you can think about using multiple vocoders in one effects chain. And that can create really, really cool sounds. Like, we might use noise this time. Turn down the depth. Uh, no, I think we'll use, we'll use modulator. Turn up the own voice volume. And then something cool that you can do with EQ creates like a weird phase effect is you'll go to mode and then LR. So you're changing how the EQ sounds in the different stereo channels. And that can create these really fantastic kind of like binaural effect. I think it sounds quite awesome. I'm quite pleased with this. Um, I know this isn't really all too similar to what I demonstrated at the very beginning. We'll bring up the width a bit, maybe. Yeah, this is quite nice. Uh, not too similar to what I was showing you at the beginning, because this is mostly trying to use things that are going to come stock or are free with Live Suite 11. Uh, but this is a similar idea as to what was going on before. And then you can, of course, just keep experimenting with it and building on it. Like, you can even maybe incorporate, like, spectral time. I love spectral effects, spectral resynthesis is awesome. Like, Rezo Glitch. This is just fantastic. Or, no, I think actually, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do... Where's that? Uh, drum snow. But bring this down a fair bit. And maybe set that to grand a little. And that sounds very nice. Feed that into the vocoder. Maybe feed that into the redux, actually. Yeah. All right. So that's the tutorial. Uh, if you have any other ideas that you might want to see me explore, maybe talk some more about spectral resynthesis, or if you have any critiques on how I can do better, more followable tutorials for Ableton Live, go ahead and let me know in the comments. 
I'm very receptive to feedback, and I hope that you'll tune in again. Thank you.